It's another month and Disney Plus is $14 billion in the hole. Meanwhile, Tubi, a streaming service that cost only $440 million, is almost beating them in the ratings. In fact, they might be if it weren't for a few decimal points that got rounded off. Let's talk about what the problem is with Disney Plus here on That Park Place. Hello, I am Jonas J. Campbell, an investigative reporter for That Park Place. And here is a man that I know from That Pod Place online or t3po uh vash how you doing today i am doing very very well uh and by the way we just had a very successful live stream recently on that pod place with a lot of you uh from this channel and others joining us thank you so much for that this is a very interesting story here jonas because uh well we've been tracking you know to be these streaming services i gotta be honest with you i mean some of them are doing right some of them not so much Yep, uh, I agree. You, you might be able to guess which ones are doing wrong in my estimation here, though. This one from Deadline and Katie Campione. Fast platforms had bigger TV share than many premium streamers. Once again in June, what is driving their success? Uh, fast means free ad supported uh, tier or television. I'm, I'm just going to guess right here that it's probably that the premium stuff costs a lot of money and isn't very good. That's just going to be my guess. All right, let's let's see if I'm right here. Vash, do you want to venture a guess? Oh, I'm I think you are correct, because I mean, look, we have seen the content spend from some of these uh, bigger uh, platforms or, or these big companies. I mean, Disney, what they're throwing 30 billion dollars, 24 billion dollars a year towards these towards these entertainment divisions to f help fund uh, these streamers. And well, can you really say, Jonas, that they've gotten their money's worth? Nope, nope, nope. They have not. Uh, the only one that's profitable in any way is Hulu. And uh, well, Hulu better be shaken in their boots at Bob Iger's plans for that one. Free ad supported mm -hmm. streaming television comes continues to be on growth trajectory. See, I got the uh, acronym right there. Uh, once again, rivaling its premium subscription counterparts in June. For the second month in a row, Tubi, the Roku channel, and Pluto TV collectively accounted for a bigger share of television, 4.3%, than the combined total of Max, Paramount Plus, and Peacock, according to Nielsen's latest edition of The Gauge, a monthly streaming report. Tubi took a 2% share of TV usage, an impressive 147 growth from May, putting it up nearly identical statistics as Disney+. Plus. In fact, when Disney+, Plus is added into the premium services collective total, it just barely surpasses the combined usage of fast channels at 4.7%. That would be when they add um, Disney+, Plus and Hulu together. I'm, 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 trying, to, I'm trying to figure out what they're, uh, where they're getting that 4.7 number because Disney was 2.0% uh, there. The obvious answer to the success of fast channels is that they are free. Well, Fesh, we're free. Why aren't <laughs> yes, we yes, more successful uh, then? Well, I, I I think we're plenty successful, but we're comfortable. <laughs> yes, we're comfortable. Uh, but if you don't pay up front, you know, uh, it, it, well, some would say that you're the product, right? Um, <laughs> That's but, a good point. Uh, it's, it's, bye. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and continue with the article, and then I'll go ahead and share my points right there. All right, let's see. The obvious answer to the success of fast channels is that is that they're free, which is very enticing to consumers with the rising cost of every premium service. But there are also other universal truths that these platforms have acknowledged and built their platforms on that have contributed to this growth. It's been a long time coming. Andrew Rosen, a former Viacom exec, Viacom, right there. Let's see, they own CBS which is a company that makes a lot of television shows that people used to watch. Huh. And the founder of streaming newsletter, uh, Parkour. That's hilarious. What fasts are ultimately proving in the wake of Netflix's success is that the product and viewing experience matters as much, if not more, than the content being watched. I don't know about that. Fasts are increasingly winning because they are products first and walled gardens for content last oh that's because you can go in and watch it as opposed to it being an exclusivity play eh, maybe i believe that yeah after years of premium streamers jockeying for subscribers those leading the fast channels argue that the future of television probably looks a lot like the past only now it's on the internet and it's on demand this is a good point vash do you have something you'd like to add in here 
think uh, I think that's a, a great point right there. It does harken back to the days of television. That is for sure. The Roku thing is interesting because obviously that's included with their devices. And remember Disney Plus and Roku had a different uh, falling out right there for just a bit. That was very uh, interesting. But here's the thing. You can almost say maybe I'm going to sound like Lou when I say this, but you can almost say that these fast channels featuring content that well people like and people are familiar with is sort of and, and just kind of like, you know, if you squint your eyes and you, you, you look at it cockeyed, it's almost similar to the original promise of Disney Plus when they originally marketed towards uh, fans specifically. It was like, hey, we're going to unleash the vault, all this content that uh, previously you know, you had to go you know, the DVD collection for, or maybe you had that VHS tape of that old Disney program that used to be on uh, on the Disney Channel back in the 80s or something like that. Hey, guess what? We're going to have all of that on Disney Plus. And everybody said, wow, that's great. You're going to unleash the vault here. And a lot of people bought in under that premise and promise. I was talking to people at the time. It was like, hey, uh, is there anything holding Disney back from being the number one streamer over Netflix? I mean, how could they go wrong? They have all this content that they've already produced. And obviously, they're the hub for content being produced now. Unfortunately, that just hasn't been the case as they've gone towards the, the um, content generation game rather than leveraging their archive or library uh, that they already had. So it, in, a, in sort of a way, you could say that, uh, that, that these fast channels featuring this content that people are familiar with is is very similar to 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 that model yeah i would say that I, i'd say that you're absolutely correct of course and and the, the achilles heel of these large uh studios like max has gotten away from this disney has slowly gotten away from this these 200 million dollar shows that that they're never that they don't have the subscriber numbers to support that the, the other thing of course is that when when people i'll give you a for instance here like there are people who would never pay so that they could watch a show. But if it was available free, they'll watch it and they'll watch the ads on it, even if those ads are enough that it would make the streamer as much money. So like the, the same kind of people that would never pick up uh, a, a box set of Gilligan's Island. However, if it's sitting in front of them, they'll binge watch the entire series or they'll have it on in the background while they're working or while they're cleaning up in the house or, or something like that. And a commercial will come up every now and then and they'll they'll hear the struggles as they somehow uh, continuously fail to get off that island. Now, let's continue with this article here. The concept of free ad supported television is not new. Duh. Uh, cue the streaming wars. In an effort to rival Netflix, the legacy studios began to take back their content and create, as Rosen put it, in walled gardens where the viewers had to pay. The demand grew for that content. And so uh, they pulled it back. As Disney was building its streaming service in 2019, CEO Bob Iger told the Wall Street Journal, I think if people are clicking on Mickey Mouse, they mostly want Mickey Mouse. Whoa, 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 whoa. How much new Mickey Mouse content have we actually gotten on Disney Plus? Because Bob Iger said something correct there. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very true, right? Even the Mickey Mouse shorts they were doing for a little bit there, they've actually ended even after the uh, new attraction opened up in Disneyland based all around them, which was kind of inexplicable to me, but whatever. Uh, Mickey Mouse, they want Mickey Mouse. That's interesting. Yeah, um, and, and that Paul Ruddish uh, Mickey Mouse content, I, I, I did not like it at first, the quote-unquote Ren and Stimpy style. But what I, I failed to realize is it's actually one of the few creative things that the Walt Disney Company was still doing. And slowly that has all started to uh, to fade over time until it gets noticed. Uh, we'll be talking about how that happened at Disneyland as well sometime very soon on this channel. Stay tuned. Tubi, Roku Channel, and Pluto all reject that logic. If someone is clicking on Mickey Mouse... They want to be entertained. And Mickey Mouse isn't always the answer to that entertainment. So what this is talking about how they do uh, channels. Oh, oh, here it is. At the end of the day, the success of these platforms hinges on how much time a person spends on one versus the other. If someone logs onto Disney Plus to watch the latest episode of The Acolyte and then immediately exits the app, because they have to go throw up. The streamer hasn't exactly done its job. Similar to Netflix, the fast channels care much less about what a viewer is watching and more so uh, about whether or not they keep watching. I'm sorry about that little pot shot there about the Acolyte. I watched it and I, I, I was forced to watch it for work and I'm, I'm still a little bitter about that. Bash, do you think that uh, free television with ads on it, do you think that'll ever work? I think it's so untested. <laughs> yeah, so untested. 
no, I, I <laughs> absolutely it'll work. It keeps working um, as these numbers highlight. But I mean, you could you could you could kind of see this from afar. It's just it's so stunning to me because I think a lot of people look at that Netflix model and they were like, we're going to do that. And they really not only cannibalized the previous model that incorporated a lot of these ideas, uh, but in their rush, they spent billions of dollars trying to chase after that dream that they were never going to attain. It's 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 so fascinating how what is old becomes new again. In this instance, I'm reminded of like boxing, for example, boxing was huge in the United States. Everybody, you know, you know, had their favorite fighters and so forth. It was a it was a pastime for a bit there. I believe in the 1980s, it kind of had its peak. And then all of a sudden they started to move boxing towards meet more premium outlets. And that kind of slowly faded the sport and the 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 appetite for it amongst the American public in a profound way. Now, other sports kind of saw that and said, well, we're not going to go ahead and do that. So like baseball, for example, or, or, or football, they've largely stayed you know, in front of that because they I think they understand that the more eyeballs are on your sport, the more it kind of catches fire amongst the populace, the more people talk about it, the more people tune in and the more ads you can actually sell for those. That's a really, really good point, Vash. I, <laughs> I appreciate that uh, very much. In the same way that the Disney parks, for instance, used to be something that everyone could do. I'm not saying it was dirt cheap, but uh, it was something that everyone could achieve if they uh, financially could figure that one out. It wasn't that difficult to figure it out. I don't want to. I don't want to sound snobbish when I say that. I know it's not for everybody, but now it's getting so expensive that it's only for a certain kind of person. That being a person that probably doesn't have kids. Now there is something funny that I want to point out here. Tubi, the Roku channel, and Pluto have all dipped their toes in the originals market. In April, the Spiderwick Chronicles became Roku's most watched on-demand title ever. Now that is fascinating. Vash, you wouldn't believe me if I uh, if I if someone else said it, but do you know who made the Spiderwick Chronicles? Mm, I I I'm unfamiliar. It was Disney. They paid for it, and then they decided to uh, shelve it and sell it to someone else because apparently they didn't think it would find success on Disney Plus. And and they were right; it found success over there on the Roku channel. That being said, we want to throw this to our subscribers. Um, are you watching Tubi, Roku, Pluto, any of these uh, services, and uh, are you, or are you watching Disney Plus? Uh, you know that that little underdog uh, over there from the giant mega corporation. They're all giant mega corporations. I don't know why I'm joking like that. Like this video if you like this video, and consider subscribing to That Park Place for all the news that should be fun. Thanks for watching That Park Place News. For more information, consider checking out www.thatparkplace.com. And don't forget to subscribe, share, like, and send this out on your favorite social media accounts.